Hey guys, Joe Smith here. Joe Smith sitting out here. Mm -hmm. Probably too dark to see, but drinking some Sam Adams Oktoberfest. Uh, saw that on the store shelf today and picked it up. There at the P Ridge Walmart neighborhood market. That allows uh, Joe Smith to open carry. <coughs> so, hats off to the cool store over there. A uh, little Civil War town uh, just south of the Missouri border, a couple miles. Uh, Joe Smith lives out in the woods near there, and that's the uh, closest town. Uh, a lot of, been a lot of uh, violence and stuff in the news here. Uh, several mass shootings, violent clashes and protests in Oregon or uh, I don't know, maybe California or Washington, somewhere out there, but West Coast, you just got all these Antifa lunatics, which needs to be classified as a terrorist organization, dealt with by the government or the military or the police or something. <coughs> they're just out trying to cause trouble. They're not protesting for freedom or for rights or anything. They're just out there looking to get everyone riled up to where they can start smashing windows and looting places and causing people to feel like they need to buy AR-15s and guns to arm themselves against all these Antifa protesters and stuff. But and Everyone's talking about gun control. Do we need gun control and all this and that? And there's all these mass shootings and uh, Oh, where, where are the shootings at? Oh, they're in s states with some of the strictest gun laws. Florida, I keep hearing there's been a couple mass shootings there uh, in recent years. Uh, Florida, you have to have a permit to conceal carry. And maybe even permit to purchase. Uh, not sure. Joe Smith's got a, a YouTube friend, Solo Yacker, down there. That Joe Smith's been learning about Florida gun laws, but you're allowed to open Gary though in Florida, as long as you're hunting, fishing, or camping, or traveling to and from. So he, Joe Smith's uh, buddy, Solo Yacker, there he lives by the beach and he'll go for a walk with his fishing pole and his AR-15 and go down and go fishing and everyone's cool with them. Everyone comes over and asks him questions and he informs them of the law and shows them in the law book exactly how it reads and that. And <coughs> uh, so he's a pretty cool guy that's been educating people and has a bit of following down there in Florida but Here in Arkansas, uh, has some of the least amount of gun laws, and which you would maybe think would not be the case. Arkansas once had a mass shooting, 1998, Jonesboro, a couple kids. They were like junior high or something, uh, pulled a fire alarm in elementary school and started shooting people, little kids and teachers as they came out of the school or that. Oh, you'd think Arkansas would have been banning guns and having more laws after that, but since then, over the years, Arkansas has reduced the laws. There's now new law where uh, well, the laws have changed over the years to where 
you no longer need a permit to conceal carry. Open carry is now permitted with no permit. Rifle, pistol, shotgun, even NFA items if you have the tax stamp and paperwork and all that. So you can walk around open carry a squad automatic weapon. Or uh, RPG or something even. If you can buy and get the paperwork approved for it, you can hope and carry it with no permit. Please don't open carry RPG though. That that's going to get some attention or that. But <coughs> you don't need an RPG to defend against a carjacking or a mugging. Also, um, they issued another law with a, uh, this new special enhanced permit. If you do have the old regular permit, which you can still get the regular permit um, to conceal carry, but you don't need it. But if you do get it and have it, then you can get a second additional permit to where you can conceal carry and colleges, universities, um, sporting events, unless the venue says no guns, <coughs> churches, uh, bars, where alcohol is served and consumed, which uh, if you're going to go to a bar, leave it in your car or leave it at home, uh, even though you can get a permit to carry in there. If you feel like you need to carry a gun in a bar, then you probably should find a different bar to go to, or you should probably stay home. So, even though it's now allowed, uh, use some common sense, people. <coughs> Don't need people getting drunk in a bar and getting argue into an argument over which football team is better and start pulling guns on each other just because you have a permit to carry one there. Oh. Oh. <coughs> and yeah, and also uh, Arkansas is a class 3 in a phase state too to where you, you can get machine guns and suppressors, or, or as Joe Smith calls them, gun mufflers. Because they don't silent the gun, they just make it a little bit quieter so you don't like, lose your hearing and stuff, practicing. But still should wear earmuffs even with the suppressor or muffler. It's just kind of too not disturb the neighbor so much or that like when you're out in the woods here <coughs> or uh, scare the neighbor's horses or that but Joe Smith don't got one he used uh, buddies one time long time ago and on his AR-15 but it was still loud as heck you can still hear it from down the street. Um, <coughs> but yeah, I mean, since Arkansas had that one mass shooting, Arkansas became a lot less restrictive on gun laws. There's a lot of people moving here like seven to 10,000 people a year move into the NWA metro area. All kinds of guns outside city limits, you can shoot on your own property all you want. And a lot of people do, especially around Joe Smith's neck of the woods. 
But yet, we, we haven't had any more mass shootings. More guns, fewer laws, more people carrying guns. So Smith's banks let you carry a gun and they're even concealed carry. But yet there's there's no shootings. Joe Smith Joe Smith don't really watch the local news. Joe Smith don't got cable or TV no more. He just watches the YouTube. Uh, <coughs> but Joe Smith's only heard of uh, one carjacking in like five years around here. Other than the time a guy tried to carjack Joe Smith and Joe Smith had a gun on him and then pointed out the window of the guy's face and the guy took off running several years ago, but Most of the crime around here is just kids breaking into cars at night or shoplifting, petty theft. <coughs> Hot checks or credit card fraud. Everyone trying to pretend they're rich. Or drugs. Drugs is a biggest thing. Too many wackles on drugs around here. But oh. Joe Smith. Joe Smith's tired of hearing all these libtards and Democrats whatnot whine about gun control. Joe Smith don't think we need gun control. Look at who the majority of the mass shooters have been over the last 20 years, 25 years. <coughs> Under 25 white boys. So we don't need gun control. We need white boy control. We need little kid control. Parents need to start controlling their children. You know, spare the rod, spoil the child. Well, that's what's happening. Nobody's giving their kids a good old-fashioned ass whoop, but no more. When I mean, the kids are out getting busted shoplifting or doing drugs and stuff. and So, kids are just turning into feral animals. Joe Smith, you see them around here. That's why Joe Smith carries the gun. He's afraid that all these little white kids are going to turn into another mass shooter. The thing keeping them from doing it is probably because they know everyone else has a gun. And uh, they'll probably be killed within a minute by a good guy with a gun. Parents just need to do something about their children and and some of the kids that have worked here with uh, <coughs> Joe Smith and his buddy over the years have just been out of control, crazy mental issues and stupid as hell and fire them and then their parents come and start throwing a fit and yelling and screaming in front of everyone and trying to cause a scene. It's like, well, guess the apple don't fall far from the tree. Apparently their parents had crappy parents. And Joe Smith thinks it all goes back to drugs. The parents were probably on drugs and marijuana and whatnot when they were having the babies or smoked and drank and... and 
had stupid babies, and the stupid babies grew up to be stupid kids, and and now there are stupid 25-year-olds that don't know how to do anything on their own, and and have rage issues as a result of being a failure. And Joe Smith's third stories from back in Iowa in Des Moines where uh, Beard CB is at and where Joe Smith grew up around that area. Um, but Joe Smith read a news report a while back on the internet talking about how Des Moines schools and probably other city schools nationwide if they're having problems in Des Moines, they're having problems in St. Louis and Chicago for sure and other places. But <coughs> they're saying that like 10 year olds or 9 year olds even are just losing it and going on rampages for an hour at a time, trashing the classroom. Teachers aren't allowed to touch them or do anything. All the teacher can do is evacuate the rest of the students from the classroom and shut the door and let the kid burn himself out with his tantrum. Otherwise the parents might sue the teacher and the school in the city for child abuse. Back when Joe Smith lived up there, and Joe Smith had a couple older teachers growing up that the push come to shove and never did with anyone. They they probably would have just pulled out a old duct tape and duct taped you to the chair and duct taped your mouth shut. And what about the rest of the class? And the parent probably would have thanked the teacher at the time, too. In fact, one, one Joe Smith's teacher, a little kid in junior high, uh, <coughs> she'd been teaching for like 40, 40 years or 50 years at that point and getting ready to retire. That she said back some 20 years prior, she did have uh, really out of control kid that was always running his mouth being disruptive and, and that kid's dad did bring a roll of duct tape and give to her and told her to use it on the kid as needed. The, old, the dad did that. And she says she did. Joe Smith remembers uh, being in elementary, uh, kids that would get in trouble and for hitting another kid, they would get sent to the principal's office and then they'd come back from the principal's office uh, crying with their hands on their butt. And the principal, who was uh, Joe Smith's uh, neighbor two doors down, that Joe Smith felt had onto his house when Joe Smith was a teenager, um, was the elementary principal. He had on his wall, and even after uh, school or city or state, whatever, wouldn't let him anymore, but he used to take a wooden paddle and uh, give kids a couple swats if they got sent there. Usually after being sent there a couple times, you'd kind of figure it out and decide that's not a place you wanted to go visit. But it had old spanky rolled on it, had it hanging up on the wall. And every time you get sent to the office, that's the first thing you see when you walk into his office, hanging up on the wall there. And, and you just stay there waiting for him to come walking in, thinking if that's going to get use on you. <laughs> that's how it used to be when Joe Smith was in elementary There weren't really too many problems with kids, so even though Joe Smith's 
hometown had a separate school for the state for uh, juvenile criminals or that, but they didn't go to the public schools. But then there's another youth placement uh, village type thing uh, just outside town that was in the school district and those those were still trouble kids but not as bad of offenders or whatever as the other place so they went to public schools then and, and even they usually were pretty good or behaved during classes that Joe Smith remembers uh, if someone were to get in trouble they would be most likely ones to get in trouble, but but otherwise everyone just kind of always got along and there wasn't really much for uh, problems or violence or whatever. Uh, so Smith remembers when he was a kid growing up that uh, people would drive around town with gun racks and rifles or shotguns hanging on the gun rack in the rear window of their pickup truck. High school kids would go and park their trucks in the high school parking lot and have rifles or shotguns hanging up in the windows of their trucks. Uh, this was a real small farm town where just about everyone knew everyone. Never had any kind of gun violence or anything. If someone was bullying you, you got up and turned around and popped them a good one in the face and knocked them out cold. And then they usually left you alone. They didn't, you hit them again. They never had to go get a gun to deal with bullies. People didn't get along, kids didn't get along, or had a grudge or beef over something or other. They'd wait till after school and then they'd duke it out. On the playground or whatever. Nobody ever one got knives or guns or nothing. Most of the kids, by the time they were junior high, had either a 410 shotgun or maybe a 20 gauge or single shot or a 22 rifle or something like that. Or at least uh, BB guns or air rifles. Joe Smith's. Uh, Two best friends in the neighborhood. One had a 22 rifle in junior high, and the other had a, a 20 gauge shotgun, and Joel Smith had an air rifle. We'd go out in the woods by the river, and we're all on the edge of town, and so we go across in the cornfield and get down to the river in the woods, and and set up some cans or whatever, do planking or that. And I mean, parents taught the kids gun safety and responsibility and stuff like that. And we had chores to do. We didn't get paid an allowance to do it either. It's just, you want to eat, you help cut firewood. Or if you want to stay warm in the winter, you help cut firewood and stack it and, and carry it. Or that. You want to eat, you help with the garden. <coughs> help pick the beans and corn and other stuff in the garden. Or or weed it with the garden hole or, or plant the stuff in the spring. And, you know, it's a kind of family thing. Joe Smith and mom and dad and sister every weekend, every summer would... Have, have a big garden that we go and spend an uh, hour or two at. At uh, a friend's property.
That was family time. Joe Smith in the fall would go out to uh, Uncle's farm pasture and find trees that had fell down and cut them up for firewood. And Joe Smith would carry and stack them and blow them in the truck. And Joe Smith's dad built a log splitter, really nice log splitter out of scrap and that. And so Joe Smith would set the logs up on the log splitter and Joe Smith's dad would run the lever back and forth and split them and then Joe Smith would toss them in the truck then. Have family time. Then in the winter time, uh, Joe Smith's dad had a wood shop he built on the back of our garage and did uh, woodworking in there. Had an old cast iron stove that uh, heat the uh, shop and garage with with the uh, uh, firewood that we cut and split. So Joe Smith, when he's out playing in the snow, having snowball fights or sledding or building snow forts with the neighbor kids and we can take a break and go in the shop and warm up and, and see what Joe Smith's dad was working on. He would fix up furniture or refinish stuff or build stuff. So Joe Smith learned how to do woodworking early on. That's family time, woodworking together with dad in the shop and learning stuff. Then we had a fireplace in the basement and roast hot dogs on it and all that. Family time. I guess people don't do this kind of thing anymore. They just give the kids some video games or you steal cars and shoot people in the video games or shoot monsters in the games or whatever and, and not trying to say that video games is a problem but and not trying to say that violence on TV or movies is a problem and that the problem is there's just no family time kids are turning to these video games or TV or movies for their family it seems like and and learning the wrong message or something. They teach the kids how to grow a garden and get them out mowing the yard or raking the leaves or helping the neighbors with their garden like Joe Smith did. Joe Smith would help neighbors mow their yard or rake leaves and garden and stuff like that growing up too. He teach kids responsibility. And they have a mandatory military boot camp or something like for a year, like all boys and girls in high school when they're uh, a senior or that. They need to have like one weekend a month and two weeks in the summer or something as a junior and senior maybe mandatory uh, National Guard service and training or that to teach them how to be adults teach them how to be responsible with guns teach them how to uh, do uh, CPR and stuff and save lives and, and build things and do good for others and but it's like Americans they're just working too much too many hours so they can buy all these things that they don't need and they're not having family time or or it's like they're on drugs and just don't care about the kids so the kids go and do drugs and turn into wild animals after practically being raised by wild animals and then all the dang done 
Dang Gum Facebook or whatever. And that, that is social stuff on the internet. And the, the viral thing, everyone wants to go viral. Uh, or whatever it's called. Everyone wants to be famous. They want to do something stupid so they can have their 15 minutes of fame on the Facebook and the YouTube or that. But you want to be famous on YouTube? Teach people how to work on cars and trucks or how to do woodworking or how to fix stuff or that. Like, like that Chris Fix guy or or the bear, or, or, uh, or Brad's workbench, he, he's pretty famous now too, uh, he shows off some stuff that he makes, and uh, Chunk from work, he's, he's getting pretty famous, and uh, he kind of teaches some about working on cars and that, see that's how you get famous, be like them guys, and uh, do uh, videos teaching people things. <coughs> what? Something, something's got to be done with the schools and stuff. You can't just let a ten-year-old stab the teacher with a pen or pencil and or scissors or whatever and not do anything about it. So, can't just let a 10 year old, 12 year old be trashed in the classroom for two hours while all the other students are going without an education and wasting their time, say in the hallway or, or out on a two hour recess on the playground because one of their classmates is going nuts again. And then everyone thinks, oh yeah, just give them more pills. What ever happened to get in trouble at school and get spanked by the principal? And then you gotta go home and you get another spanking by your mom or dad. Mom gets a wooden spoon or yardstick out or something and <coughs> or dad he gets home from work and takes off his belt and gives you a whooping with that <coughs> and that's what we need and post a video of it on Facebook or YouTube You're like hey this kid uh Spent two hours trashing his classroom and stabbed his teacher with a pen. So here, Dad, so uh, give him a spanking with the belt. And telling the kid, it'll never happen again. Parents need to discipline their kids, but anymore, it's like the kids call the police or social worker or whatever and get the parents arrested for child abuse or Bill Smith just kind of wishes he'd live like 100 years ago or 150 years ago or that reading in books it just seems like everything everyone was so much happier back then America was so much greater back then Kids grew up working on farms and learning responsibility. Kid was a man by the time of 14 or 15, not by the time they're 30 or 35. Women back then knew how to sew and make things, and make Clothes, make their own clothing, which Joe Smith thinks is nice. Joe Smith even learned how to sew in junior high class and thought that was pretty neat. Uh, <coughs> I 
and men can so to learn how to do things. Joe Smith's dad used to make uh, rent shoulders and pouches out of vinyl that he used to sew together. And other tool pouches and holders. But he just pull out this rolled up tool holder made out of vinyl and unroll it and there's your wrench assortment or, or your plier assortment or whatever. And you can just grab them real quick and easy and toss them in the truck or whatever. And then also that Facebook and social media or YouTube or I think uh, some people or Facebook especially or everyone's trying to show off, oh look what I bought, look what I have and, and half the time they're just taking some picture from internet or whatever. Like some girl had a whole channel acting like her mom was rich and she was rich and she owned all these places and turned out that her mom worked for was just this minimum wage secretary for the guy that actually owned those places and the car or whatever and someone else was posting his two new cars the bull ribbon on them or whatever claiming that they got them for their 16th birthday and they're like hundred thousand dollar cars or something but Turned out it was a picture that some uh, movie star or, or famous athlete or whatever had, had bought them and posted them on their Facebook or something. And this teenager took a uh, famous person's car pictures and was claiming it was their own. And, and everyone started calling them out on it because everyone is from someone famous. They had a lot of people looking at their page, so it's like everyone recognized the pictures instantly. It's like, why are you people doing this? Around here, Joe Smith's seen a lot of people buying big houses in these gated neighborhoods that and apparently can't afford them because they they call our company here, and and Joe Smith's gone out a few times to fix something or other, and, and yeah, they got a ex nice new expensive car sitting in the driveway, and, and they got this big two-story house, and then you go inside, and it's like it's empty. They got a little TV sitting on a box in their living room with a couple beanbag chairs, and they have like a plastic uh, Walmart patio furniture table and chair set for their kitchen table and chair and nothing hanging out of the walls, no decoration, it's just completely empty inside. And spent all the money on the outward appearance and they don't got any money for anything inside now, for any furniture or air mattress or just mattress or air mattress or something laying on the floor for their bed and it's like $400,000 house and a $50,000 car and, and you got a $100 TV and a $60 patio set for your Dining set, and you got air mattress for a bed. Like, why not go buy a hundred thousand dollar house and put on a fifteen year loan and 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 save half a million dollars in mortgage payments and interest and that and. And use that money to get you a nice bed and a uh, uh, nice living room set or whatever. But like people are stupid. Everyone just wants to look rich and.
be someone they're not, and, and impress people that don't care or are probably as big of a fake as they are. And And then they can't even keep up with the house payments. Have to work two jobs and stuff, and and then no time for family time with the kids. Then kids get mixed up with wrong people, and start doing drugs and shoplifting, and so. That's the problem with America. We don't need gun control. We need family control or families to control their kids or parents. Be parents and quit trying to impress people that they don't know and, and that don't care about them. And, and, and use that money or or where you don't have to work so much so you can go spend time with kids and stuff. <laughs> Even if it's just having picnic, family picnic at the park or whatever, or, or going to the swimming pool or the ice skating rink or something. Uh, you don't have to spend a ton of money having family outings and having fun or that. Just go play the miniature golf, the putt-putt golf or whatever for afternoon or something and and have a have a little picnic or that. make some sandwiches to take longer. Have a garden that you work on on the after kids get home from school for a little bit or something and, and teach the kids how to cook and how to make pickles and stuff. I used to grow cucumbers and some of the cucumbers we'd eat and others, uh, Joel Smith's mom would make uh, pickles out of, like lime pickles or something I think they were called. They're always really, really, really super good. We grow carrots and, or, and potatoes and, and green beans and corn and, that we eat. We have corn on the cob that we grew. Um, rhubarb, we have, make rhubarb pie and acorn squash and Zucchini, Joe Smith's mom used to make zucchini bread. The zucchini we grew. And Joe Smith's and his sister helped mom with all the making the bread and making the pickles and, and making Rice Krispie bars and brownies and making cakes and stuff like that and cookies. It's always it's another family thing on the holidays. We bake cookies together as a family chocolate chip cookies or yeah, they forget what they're called like spritz cookies or something that we have the uh, color the dough with with food coloring for and then have different shapes that we put on this thing and squeeze the dough out and it come out as that shape and that's like a Christmas tree or, or uh, Christmas shaped things for that Christmas sign we'd make or other holidays like Valentine's Day and have them shaped as hearts and stuff. And we take them around and share them with some of the neighbors that we're good friends with and and every now and then neighbor would come walking on come walking over or something that they make for us too. And we just go in the evenings, go hang out on the neighbor's deck or porch and chit chat with them and uh, Joe Smith's mom and dad would, or Joe Smith and his sister were riding their bikes around out in the street out front there, or 
or else they'd come over and hang out on our deck and and watch uh, us play in the backyard and stuff. But just so much nicer back then. They had a telephone hanging on the wall or that cord attached to it and an answer machine put a little tape in and when you get home and you go and see if the light was blinking and if it was you check to see who called you call them back and uh, most of the time if you want to talk to one of the neighbors you just walk down the street you got on your bike and rode down the street to see if their garage door was open and and that was kind of the thing in our neighborhood that we got up in the morning, we'd open our garage door, and a lot of the other neighbors did. Some did it, some would always leave their garage door shut. But, but it's like, well, go ride your bike down the street or walk down the street and have their garage doors open and go knock on the door and see if they're busy or if you want to chit chat with someone or. Uh, or if you had a friend or something that you want to play with that have cell phones or anything like that. It wasn't like you're glued to your phone having to check it all the time to see if someone posted an update or a response or, or clicked like or thumbs up or whatever. It didn't have time for that. I had, I had more important things to do back then. I think that's what I think that's what the country really needs. You, if America really wants to make America great again, then parents need to start being parents. Families need to start having family time. Everyone needs to turn off the phone and the inter interwebs and the TV and go outside and play and be friends and socialize with people. Talk to them. Listen to them. I think it's uh absence of this and letting technology raise kids is I think that's what's causing everyone to grow up to have these mental issues and and low self esteem because they don't have any skills, they don't know know how to do nothing. So they have low self esteem and and they don't have any real friends, they just have people that they click like to on their internet or whatever and or text message or I think if there is that more actual social interaction and people having fun together. It's especially people of all races having fun t together amongst each other and uh, religions or all that. Another thing back then um, is like it didn't matter what church you went to or what color your skin was back then. Uh, nobody cared. You're you're Bob or you're Jill or you're, you're just another person in the neighborhood or in town. No. So Smith remembers uh, uh, his fourth grade teacher and, and her son was in Joe Smith's class but they adopted this uh, little girl that was black when Joe Smith was in elementary and and she was like the first black person in town or that and everyone wanted to go be her friend. Everyone wanted to go be her friend. And 
they got to be worse. So, that's Sydney. That's not a black girl, that's Sydney. Like, you don't even think of her black girl, you just think of her as like, oh, that's, that's, uh, Chris's sister, Cindy. Even though she was adopted, it's like, it's still Chris's sister. Even though they're different hair color, different, or, well, they both have black hair, I guess. But different skin color, it's like, it still is, it's Chris's sister, Cindy. It's like, who cares where she's from? She's Chris's sister, Cindy, now. One of Joe Smith's little sister's best friends turned out to be growing up then too, so. Uh, very nice young lady now. Still talk to her now and then, but. <coughs> and then college, uh, like 30% of the college was either black or Asian or or from Europe or Russia or somewhere and it's it's just like so cool meeting these people and being friends with them that are from other countries and learning about the countries and all that and and their religion, their culture and stuff. It's like everyone was friends with everyone back then. It, Nobody cared where you're from. Nobody, nobody really saw skin. I mean, skin color was the same as hair color, eye color. Yeah, everyone's got different hair color, eye color, and skin color. But we're all, we're all here at the same college. We're all students at the same college. We're all friends. So, I don't know why it's just been going downhill over the last. Ten years or so, ever. Nah, not, not blame Obama. Joe Smith knows a lot of people who like to blame Obama, but not trying to blame Obama for nothing here. But it's just around that same time when it just seems like America started really going downhill. Yeah, I had mass shootings before Obama. Uh, the mass shootings under. Bush and Clinton. Uh, it's just seems like last ten years or so, everything's getting worse. Don't know if it's caused if all the hates caused from the nine eleven attacks still, or or nobody trusts anyone anymore, or or if it's just hates stems from jealousy or if the hate stems from not having parents growing up teaching you not to hate or what but Joe Smith's tired of it. Joe Smith wishes America be, could be great again like it was 30 years ago when we didn't have all these mass shootings and stuff and you walk into someone's house and they had rifles or shotguns hanging up on the wall. We had antique uh, shotgun hanging up above our fireplace growing up that Joel Smith has now. Joel Smith's dad had a gun rack in his bedroom with Three more rifles on it from that he brought home from Turkey when he was in the military during the Vietnam War. Well, it's like we were we were taught never touch them. Um, Unless uh, we're with the parent and, and that, but and we respect our parents. I mean, all of our parents around the neighborhood were pretty cool back then. Got to 
just uh, after school go out and play and when the street lights come on come home or there in the summertime especially uh, summertime get let uh, get to sleep in a little bit later but then you get up and you have uh, breakfast or soup or something you watch uh, cartoons and you watch uh, Price is Right with Bob Barker and then you go out and find some neighbor kids to play with or you go down the creek or or to the pond or go on the hiking trails by the river or or ride your bike around town or go for the afternoon when the pool open you walk over to the or ride your bike over to the city pool and, and everyone hung out at the city pool in the afternoons meet all sorts of friends hanging out at the city pool in the afternoons back then Sorry, Joe Smith's been ranting and rambling longer than he thought. Just nice sitting out here enjoying the nice evening here. And a couple of deer about 150 feet away over the field there. But that's. That's kind of how things were back when Joe Smith grew up in Iowa, in a small farm town in Iowa. And a lot of the kids grew up on farms back then and had chores they had to do before work or before school, and then they had chores they do when they got home and stuff. But, and after they got their chores done, they could go, go hunting with Dad on the weekends with their shotgun or their rifle or whatever, or they go out and target shoot. And, and kids have responsibility. Back then, uh, by the time you were 16, you had a driver's license. And most of the kids were already driving on permits with parents at 14, and the farm kids were already driving tractors down the highway at nine or ten. That's the difference between now and then. Then a ten year old would drive a tractor out to the field, help dad with uh, 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 harvesting crops and stuff. Dad drive the combine and the ten year old or twelve year old would drive the tractor and and Kids were just more mature and grown up by that age back then. <coughs> Nowadays, a 10 year old is acting like a mentally retarded two year old, stabbing teachers with pens and trashing classrooms and posting threats on Facebook and stuff and harassing people and bullying. And And then, then you wonder why they turn out to be mass shooters. We don't need gun control, America. We need family values and children control. We need parents to control their dang kids or don't have dang kids. And teach the dang kids how to work. When they're 10 years old. Teach them some skills. Teach them how to change the oil and wash the car and stuff. And teach them to cook. Get a sewing machine out and have them make their own clothes. Whether they're a boy or a girl. Teach, 
she's both boys and girls out of soul and make their own goals. Joe Smith ever had kids. Joe Smith wants to have his kids able to so and make their own clothes and Joe Smith thinks that'd be cool. Well that's it for Joe Smith's rant here for the night. If you stuck with this long till the end. Thank you. Have a good night everyone. Joe Smith sign out.